So this is the lab version for histology. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to look at tissues. Uh, we spent quite a bit of time talking about tissues in lecture, so this is kind of just a review. But let's look at tissues. Remember there are four different types of tissues in the adult. So we have epithelial tissues, we have connective tissues, we have muscle, and we have nervous tissue. So no matter where you look in the body, no matter what you're looking at, it has to be one of these four different uh, types of tissues. And we're kind of going to go through them fairly quickly and look at some slides. Uh, we talked about the characteristics of all these tissues uh, in lecture. And so even though we may talk about it a little bit in here, if you really want to know that, you should go to the lecture slides. But let's uh, talk about epithelial tissues first. <clears throat> so here's an epithelial tissue right here. Not this whole thing, but only from uh, here to here. That's the epithelial tissue, not this over here. And the reason I know this is because epithelial tissues are surface tissues. And so there's always going to be a surface so look, there's space out here, empty space. So this tissue is facing that space, and so it's on the surface. <clears throat> and so when we look for epithelial tissue, what we're going to look for are two things. And one of those is that space. And so there's going to be an edge to the tissue that faces the space. That edge is called the apical surface. So right here, all along here, the tops of these cells, that's our apical surface. So that's one boundary to the epithelial tissue. The other boundary is that epithelial tissues set on top of something called a basement membrane. And a basement membrane is a little bit like glue. It's not alive. And what it does is it attaches the epithelial tissue to the underlying tissues, whatever they are. And so it sort of glues it on. It holds it in place. Well, you can see it right here. And so that is the other thing I want to look for when I'm looking for an epithelial tissue. So I'm going to find this empty space. I'm going to find this apical surface. And then I'm going to find this basement membrane. And the epithelial tissue is what's between those two things. So this is the epithelial tissue. There's no other epithelial tissue in this slide. It's just this. And so we're going to have to do that every time that we find an epithelial tissue. And then we want to be able to talk about epithelial tissues, and so we're going to name them. And in order to name them, we're going to look for two criteria. One is how many rows of cells are there between that apical surface and that basement membrane. And when you look, there are only two choices. You can have one, one row of cells. There's our apical surface. There's our basement membrane. One row of cells, and there it is. Or we can have more than one. And if you have more than one, again, there's our apical surface. There's our basement membrane. Look, there's one, two, three, four, five, but it's more than one. If we have one row, it's called a simple epithelium, one row. If it's more than one row, it's called a stratified epithelium. And it doesn't matter if it's two or a hundred. It just has to be more than one. So when we look at it, that's one of the criteria we're going to use. The other criterion we're going to use to name it is what shape are the cells in the outer rows? So if we look at this one, there are only three shapes. There's this flat shape, which is called squamous. There's sort of a box or cube shape, which is called cuboidal. And there's a tall shape like a column, so it's called columnar. Those are the only three shapes there are. And so what we're going to do to name them is we're going to put those things together. So we get simple squamous. So simple one row, squamous flat cells. 
Same thing here, simple cuboidal, one row cube shaped cells, simple columnar, one row column shaped cells. And then there's sort of a special one called pseudostratified. And if you look at that word, pseudo means false, and stratified means more than one layer. And so this tissue tries to fool you. It looks like it's more than one layer, but it's not. It's really only one. And when we see it, I'll show you how to tell that it is. But let's look at simple squamous. So if you listen to the lecture uh, on this, you'll know that in the lab book, there's a box for every tissue. And here's this box right here. And everything you need to know about this tissue is in this box. So look what's in here. There's a picture. There's a photomicrograph. There's a drawing here so you can see what it is that you're supposed to be looking at. There's a description. Look, single layer of flat cells. And then there's where do you find this tissue and what does this tissue do? So everything you need to know about this tissue is in this box. So let's look at this tissue. So what we're looking at is down deep inside the lungs are little bitty sacs. These little sacs are a little bit like hollow grapes, and they're called alveoli. Well, what we see over here in this picture is those hollow grapes. There's one of them right there, and there's another one right there, and there's another one. And they're not perfect in this one, but anyway, you can see them. And the wall of this hollow grape is simple squamous epithelium. So if we were to draw it, it would be thin, thin, thin like this. And there's the nucleus and thin, thin, thin like this all the way around our sac. That's what it would look like. And that's exactly what this tissue looks like. So if we look here, there's the nucleus right there. And there's the nucleus right there. And there's the nucleus. So this one cell goes from here to here. That's that cell. So look what it looks like. It looks like almost like a line with a little purple spot on it. That's how thin it is. And again, there's only one layer. So this is simple squamous epithelium. If we were to blow it up and just look at this surface, here it is right here. And so we can see this. Here's one cell right here. Look how thin it is. And here's another cell right here. Not this down here. That's not this tissue. Here's our apical surface and here's our basement membrane. So we're only looking at this tissue right here. And so that's simple squamous epithelium. Let's look at simple cuboidal. So here's our box, just like we saw before. And again, we're going to have a picture, we're going to have a, di a diagram, we're going to have a description, and then we're going to have a location and a function. So if we look at this diagram, look at it. This is one row. Here's my apical surface. There's my basement membrane. One row. But these cells are shaped like cubes, and they have a round nucleus right in the middle. So they look like a box. And look, it's just one row. So here's this box like this. Well, it could be flat the way this picture is, but it could also be folded up like this into a circle. So if we were to fold it up into a circle, it would look like this. There's a hollow space in the middle. And then these cells are going to be like this. And we're going to have nuclei in these cells. So what we're going to wind up with here is a tube. And that's exactly what we see right here. That's a tube. So here's the hollow space. There's a tube. And here's the hollow space, the tube. And so you can see a bunch of these. Well, some of these cells don't look like they have nuclei. Look at that cell. It looks like it's without a nucleus. And so does that one. And so does that one. 
But that's not true. It's just that when the cut was made, the nucleus was removed. These cells look like this one. Look, that's a perfect little cuboidal cell. And so I remember, or remember when I talked about how you're going to have to be able to look at these and pick out the cells you want to look at. Remember our egg where it was sliced? We had all these different slices, and each slice of that boiled egg looked different. In this picture, it's a little more obvious. There's the tube. There's another one. There's another one. There's the hollow space in the middle, and you can see these little cube-shaped cells with a round nucleus. Well, that was a drawing, but this is an actual picture. So there's our hollow space, and here's our cell. There's one cell right there. Here's another cell, another one. And so some of these are perfect. Some of them are not perfect. But still, that's what they're supposed to look like. Let's look at simple columnar. So again, we have this box. We went over that. And here's our drawing right here. So if we look at this drawing, look how tall these cells are. They're tall and skinny. They have an oval-shaped nucleus, which tends to hang around down at the bottom. And so you can see them very easily. Well, if we look at this photomicrograph over here, here's our apical surface. There's the basement membrane, really obvious in this slide. And then here's the cell right here, tall, skinny cell, nucleus which hangs around down at the bottom. Now, again, they're not absolutely perfect, but they're pretty good. But there it is over there on that side. Again, this is a tube or a hollow organ. Here's a drawing of that same thing. You should also remember that we have these other cells associated with columbar uh, tissue, which are called goblet cells. And goblet cells make mucus. So in this picture, you can see mucus coming out of the goblet cell. And what it does is it winds up coating the surface of the tissue. So here is simple columnar. Again, look how tall and skinny these cells are. So here's a cell right here. See how skinny it is. Here's our apical surface up here. There's the basement membrane, that purple line right there. And you can see it fairly well. So this is our tissue, and again, tall, skinny cells with a nucleus down at the bottom. So, simple columnar. And then we have that one that kind of fakes you out. Again, it's called pseudostratified. Pseudo means false. So in other words, this tissue looks like it's more than one layer. And the reason for that is because if we look over here, we tend to line up nuclei and call that a layer. So if we did that, we'd have two layers there. But it doesn't work because every single cell, whether they make it to the top or not, they touch the bottom. And if every single cell touches the bottom, there's really only one layer. Well, over here, it's very obvious that it looks like more than one layer. Look, that looks like a layer, that looks like a layer, that looks like a layer, that looks like a layer. Maybe even another one in there. It looks to me like there's four or five layers. But again, it's not that way because every cell comes all the way to the bottom. They may not reach the top, but every cell comes to the bottom. And so there's only one layer. Well, this tissue is really difficult for a lot of people. And so to make it easier, if you look over here, this tissue, there are no cilia. But if I look at this one, look, it has cilia present. And so to make this a little easier for students, 
this is the only way you're going to see it. You're going to see it with cilia. So it has cilia. And it is the only tissue with cilia. It's the only one. So if that is true, then it's a real easy tissue to recognize. Because the instant you see cilia, you, ha you know it's pseudostratified. Because that's the only one you're going to see like that. Now, if you take a more in-depth course, uh, graduate level or something like that, you'll find out that there's more than one variety, but we're not going to worry about that. If it has cilia, it's pseudostratified columnar epithelium. So look at this. This is a blow-up of that. Here's the basement membrane. There's my apical surface. So here's the tissue from here to here. So we know it's an epithelial tissue. And then here are all of these cilia. So it has to be pseudostratified columnar. And just like all columnar tissues, we can have goblet cells. So that's a goblet cell. That's a goblet. And remember, goblet cells make mucus. And so that mucus winds up up at the top. And what happens is these cilia, which can move, they move the mucus in a particular direction. So the mucus gets moved along by the cilia. So pseudostratified. So those were the simple epithelia. Remember, that means one layer. But we also have stratified epithelia. And all stratified means is that it has layers more than one. We don't know how many, but we know it's more than one. And then we're going to use our shape category again, and we're going to look at the shape of the cells in the outer rows. And we're going to have stratified squamous, stratified cuboidal, stratified columnar, and then transitional. So let's look at stratified squamous. So here's our box. Again, everything you need to know about this tissue is in this box. And if we look at it over here, if we look at the cells at the bottom, they may look uh, squamous. In fact, these don't. They look like this. But if you look at them at the top, they do look squamous. And remember, we're only going to look at the top when we try to figure out the shape. So up here, they're flat. So lots of rows. You can see how many. I don't know exactly, but lots of rows. And the outer cells are flat, so stratified squamous. But there's two varieties of stratified squamous. And the difference between them is keratin. Keratin is a protein that our bodies make. And it's what our hairs are made out of. It's what our fingernails and toenails are made out of. And it's also in our skin. And so keratinized is found in the skin. And if you touch your skin, your skin is dry. So sometimes... This is called dry. But we also have stratified squamous in other places, like in the mouth and in the esophagus and in the vagina and the anal canal. And those places, if you touch those, they're moist. Well, this tissue does not have keratin. And so... This is sometimes called wet. So this one we just looked at is wet. Well, how do I know that? The way we're going to tell them apart is we're going to look for nuclei in the outer rows. So up here near the top, look, there's cells that have nuclei. And so if you have nuclei, it is non-keratinized. It's wet. Because keratin blocks water. Well, there's nothing to block the water. And so water comes from the tissues below. 
and it collects on the surface. And so if you touch this tissue, it feels wet, it feels moist. So look, nuclei, nuclei, nuclei. So this is non-keratinized. You can see them here. These are nuclei. So look how many rows of cells it is. I don't know. But again, if we look down here, they're not shaped flat. They're like this. So we're not going to look down here. We're going to look up here. And here the cells are like this. And we're going to find nuclei up here. So this is stratified squamous, non-keratinized. Look at this one though. Here's the tissue and it goes from here to here. Well, look from all this area here, there's not one nucleus. There are no nuclei at all. And that's because keratin, which starts in this layer right here, keeps fluid from going any further. So the fluid can't get through the keratinized layer. And so it can't make it to the surface. And so if I were to touch the surface up here, it would be dry. And since the fluid can't go through, that means no nutrients can get through, no oxygen. And so what's going to happen to all of these cells is they're going to die. So if you look at this, these outer rows are completely dead. And they're dead above where the keratin starts. And when they die, the nuclei disintegrate. And so we're going to have no nuclei. And so if we look at this, look up here, no nuclei. Right there is where the keratin starts. The tissue goes from here down to here or here down to here. But in this layer, it's dead. No nuclei. And so this is keratinized stratified squamous. Let's look at stratified cuboidal. And look, I have this thing here where it says not set up. So if you were actually in the lab, there would be no microscope for this. We wouldn't set it up. The reason why is because it's not a very common tissue. It's a rare tissue. And so is this one, stratified columnar, not set up because it's a rare tissue. But let's look at it. If we go back here, look, stratified means more than one layer, cuboidal. So look, the outer rows are shaped like cubes. Well, again, this is a rare tissue. You can buy it in your lab book if you want, or you can go to the uh, lecture on this and where I talk about it. But we're not going to spend much time with it. Same thing here. Look, stratified columnar. So if we look at the outer rows, look, they look like columns. Not these down here. They don't look like that. But these look like columns. So more than one row, outer rows look like columns. And then the last epithelial tissue is called transitional. Transitional is called that because it changes. And what makes it change is stretch. So if you see it in a stretch state, it looks very different from this. This is relaxed. And when it's relaxed, when there's nothing pulling on it, it stacks up and the top cells look like this. They have domes. They look like they are domed at the top and they're called dome cells. You can see them over here. These are dome cells. No other tissue does this. And so, you can recognize it pretty easily. Look, domes, domes. Their the top row has these domes. So 
So here it is, not stretched. You can see the domes. But look what happens when you stretch it. Everything flattens out. It changes. And that's why it's called transitional. Well, the only way I'm going to show it to you, like I said, is in this unstretched state. So we can always look up here and find the dome cells to figure it out. So those are the epithelial tissues. Any questions? Again, if you want more detail, you can go to the lecture portion of this. Let's look at connective tissues. So if you look at connective tissues, we talked about this in lecture, but connective tissues, the cells don't necessarily touch each other. Here's a cell, here's a cell. There's a bunch of space between the cells, but the space is not empty. It has what's called matrix in it. And matrix has two parts. It has this ground substance, which is filler material, and it has protein, fibers, which are these things like this. So when we look at it, you can see it. There's the ground substance right there. That's the filler material. And here are the fibers. And there are three different kinds of fibers. We talked about these more in lecture, but there's collagen. There's elastin or elastic fibers. And there's reticular fibers. And if you look here, you can see it again. This is the picture that's in your lab book. So the blue ones are collagen. They're thick and they're strong. These orange ones are elastin. And elastin, just like it sounds like, is stretchy, like a rubber band. And these blue ones, then, are the reticular fibers. And they form sort of like a net inside the tissue. Well, when you look at connective tissues, there's a bunch of them, and they're divided up into four groups. We have connective tissues prop, we have cartilages, we have bone, and we have blood. So let's look at the connective tissues proper. They're also divided up, and they're divided up into two groups, loose and dense. So, as I said in lecture, get the word loose in your head. It makes it a whole lot easier to remember these. Think about loose. Loose sounds like it's soft. It sounds like it's spread out. Whereas dense sounds like it's packed, and it sounds like it's strong. And so, they're very different from each other. So let's look at the loose ones. So there's three loose ones. There's a realer, there's adipose, and reticular. So if you look at a realer, here's our box. We already know about this. If you look at a realer, here is our picture. So Priscilla says, excuse me, so matrix is composed of ground substance and fibers. That's exactly right. So if you look in this picture right here, this is the ground substance. And ground substance is filler material. And it can be all sorts of things. So it could be water, but it could also be minerals. And then here are the fibers. There's collagen, and there's elastin. And these really, really little faint ones here, those are reticular fibers. And then here are the cells and look, they're hardly ever touching each other. They're all spread out. So if we look at this tissue, here's a better picture of it. This is a real or connective tissue. And a good way to think about a realer is to think of something like pillow stuffing. Think about pillow stuffing. Pillow stuffing is soft. It's spread out. It's cushiony. That's why we put it in the pillows. It protects our head and neck while we're sleeping because it's soft. But again, there's three, there's a 
three fibers in here. There's collagen. There's elastin. And then here are reticular fibers, these really, really thin, faint ones that you can see in there. And then we have adipose tissue. Adipose tissue is a little different because the cells are different. If you look at adipose tissue, the cells are big and round. And what they do is they store fat. So an adipose cell is called an adipocyte. And then what happens is the nucleus and the cytoplasm have any, hardly any room because the room is taken up by liquid fat. So if we look at it, here's where that fat is. Here's where that fat is. So a good way to think about adipose tissue, at least the way it looks, is to think about bubble wrap. And you think about what you use bubble wrap for, you use it to protect stuff. But it doesn't have air in it. It would be like if it was bubble wrap that had fat in it. So right here we have this with fibers. So let's go back and look at the fibers here. So again, there's three kinds of fibers. So in the picture here, this is collagen. Collagen tends to stain pink. So they colored it blue, but it tends to stain pink. So if we look here, everything that's stained pink that's collagen. And look how thick these fibers are. They're big, thick fibers. And then we have reticular fibers. In this picture, reticular fibers are orange. And reticular fibers, they're usually sort of coiled or whatever. They're stretchy. They're like rubber bands. They tend to stain very, very dark. I don't know why they used orange, but they tend to stain dark. So if we look in this picture, these dark ones that you see, very dark, those are elastic fibers. In this picture, here, these are elastic fibers. They're easy to see. And look, they're curled sometimes like that. And then we have a third fiber. And this third fiber is like this. It forms sort of a network, like a fish net inside tissue. And it's very, very faint. And they're hard to see because they're very diffuse. They're spread out like a net. Another way to think about them is think about a spider web. So if we look in here, these things that are very hard to see, they're skinny, really, really skinny and hard to see, like these over here. And like this one, they're very faint and they're hard to see. So if we look in here, it would be something like this or this, these really, really, really hard to see ones. They don't, they don't show up very well. Well, you can't see too much of that in here, but that's also what's in here, in between these adipose cells. So Johannan says they both look the same. They don't look the same, really. Look how dark this is, and how dark that is, and how dark that is. These are not like that. Look how thin they are and how hard they are to see. Does it make sense now? It's just think about two different thicknesses of a thread. That's the difference. This is a little thicker thread. This is the thin thread. And then collagen is a really big thick thread.
So, so that would be collagen, that would be elastin, and that would be a reticular fiber. So that's adipose tissue. And then we have reticular tissue. And so we're going to have a lot of reticular fibers. So remember, they're really skinny and hard to see. But what happens if you put a lot of threads in one place? When you put thousands of threads together, it's going to look thick. And that's what we're seeing right there. So that's thousands of these little tiny threads put together. But there are places where you don't see very many of them, like over here. You don't see very many. But look how dark they stain. They stain very, very dark. And they look like this. So these are reticular fibers here. And so reticular fibers... Um, when you have a bunch of them together, it looks a lot like a sponge. So that's a good way to think of this. It looks like a sponge. So those are the loose connective tissues proper. Let's look at the dense ones. So again, dense means tightly packed. So we're still going to have fibers. And the fibers are going to be tightly packed. They also are arranged differently. So if you look at the arrangement of the fibers, it's either going to be sort of an irregular arrangement or an irregular arrangement. Or instead of having collagen, we're going to have elastin. So what we have here is dense regular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, and elastic connective tissue. So look at these fibers. So if you look at these fibers, look, they all run like this. Every single one of them, they're all parallel to each other. And if they're straight, every one is going to be straight like this. If they're curved, every one of them is going to be curved like this. They're all parallel. They're all parallel to each other. In other words, it's very, very regular. Again, it's dense because look how closely packed they are. And then they're all parallel. And so this is dense regular. So if you look at this, it's using a different stain. But look at these fibers. These are those collagen fibers. And you can see that where one is wavy, everyone is wavy. Where one is wavy this way, everyone is wavy. They're parallel. That's dense regular. But we also have dense irregular. So in this case, we still have collagen, but look, they're not parallel. They're not like this at all. They're like this and this and this and that and this and that one and that like that and this. They're very irregularly ranged. So if you look at them, look at these fibers. This one's going this way. This one's going this way. This one's going this way. That one's going that way. That one's going this way, this way. You can see that there's no parallel. They're not parallel at all. And since they're not parallel, it's not regular, it's irregular. And here again is another one. If you just follow these, look, that one goes like this, and that one goes like that, and this one goes this way, and that way, and this way. They're very irregular. but it's mostly collagen. If we change the fiber to elastin, we get a different tissue. So look, all of these dark staining fibers in here, not the pink ones, but the black ones, those are elastic fibers. We blow this up, these are elastic fibers. These are elastic fibers. So there's a whole lot more elastin in it. And so this is elastic connective tissue. So if you look at elastic connective tissue, it does have collagen. That's what this stuff is. That's collagen, the red stuff. 
So all of this is collagen. But in between the collagens, there are these wavy black fibers, and those are elastic fibers. And so this is elastic connective tissue. So those were the connective tissues proper. We also have cartilages. And there are three of these cartilages. There's hyaline, there's elastic, and there's fibrous. Well, cartilage is a little different from other tissues. One difference is it has no blood vessels. None. No blood vessels at all. So it makes it really slow to grow. It makes it really slow to heal. Another difference is it's a very, very dense tissue. And because it's so dense, there have to be holes in the tissue for the cells to have a place to be. The holes are called lacunae. And the cells are chondrocytes or chondroblasts. Chondro means cartilage. So all cartilage is going to have these chondrocytes in these lacunae. Well, remember there's three types of cartilage. So let's look at hyaline first. So a good way to think about hyaline or try to remember it, it looks to me like Swiss cheese because it looks like it's got holes in it. And those are holes. Remember, those are those lacunae, a place for the sites to be located. If we blow that up, it looks like this. You can see them, the holes. Here's a better picture. There's a hole with a cell in it. There's a hole. It has collagen fibers, but it's so dense. The fibers are so close to each other that you can't see individual fibers. It just looks almost solid. We also have elastic cartilage. And so it's going to have more elastin in it. That's really about the only difference between it and hyaline. It has more elastin. So these black fibers that you see in here, those are elastic fibers. We've still got chondrocytes sitting in lacunae. Still got that. You blow that up. Here are those collagen fibers in here. And if you look at it here, this black that you see, this stuff, that's collagen fibers. So since you have so many, uh, sorry, this is elastic fibers. And since you have so many elastic fibers, this tissue is stretchy. It has stretch. And just like a rubber band, it will snap back to its original position. It has recoil. And then we have fibrocartilage. It's called that because you can see the fibers. You can see the collagen. And if you look here, it's easy to see these collagen fibers. Now, usually collagen stains pink, but in this tissue, it tends to stain blue. But look, there's still these chondrocytes still sitting in lacunae. That's is not changed. That's in all uh, ca uh, cartilages. So if we blow that up, look, these blue fibers are those collagen fibers. Here are the cells sitting in the lacunae. It looks, since we can see the fibers, it's fibrous cartilage or fibro cartilage. And then we have bone. There's two types of bone. So we have dense, which is also called compact, and we have spongy bone, which is sometimes called diplo. So if you look at dense bone, it looks like this. 
And if you look at it, it what it looks like is looks like someone cut a bunch of trees down and there's a stump and another stump and another stump. It's got rings like rings on a tree. They go in a circle like this, just like the rings on a tree. And then it looks like there's a whole bunch of bugs crawling around on it. Well, this is actually dead bone and there are no cells left in it. All it is is the matrix. The cells have gone away because it's dead. So what someone did was they dug this up out of a grave or someplace like that and they ground it down until it was thin, thin, thin and they poured ink on it. And the ink goes into all the little spaces. Every little crack, every little crevice is going to turn black. So when you look at it, if it were alive, were these things that looked like bugs are the cells, but it's dead. And so these are the spaces where the bugs or the cells used to be. So that's those lacunae. So Priscilla says, how do we recognize a dead bone? You're always going to see it that way. It's always going to be dead. If you look at it under a microscope, that's just the way it's prepared. Otherwise, what you would see are cells and blood vessels and so on. But this is dead bone. So again, look at that. It looks like a tree stump. And then you see lots of rings, 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 like that all the way around. Here are those lacunae. That's where the cells would be located if it were still alive. Actually, right here is where a blood vessel would be. You don't have to know all that for now. We will learn it when we get to bones. But mostly you just need to be able to recognize it. And bone is one of those tissues that no one ever misses. Nobody ever misses this because nothing else looks like it. So please don't be the first person to miss it because nobody misses this. So that's dense bone. We also have spongy bone, but spongy bone is not set up in the lab, and so I didn't set it up on here either. But if you want to know about spongy bone, you can go to the lecture PowerPoint, the lecture Collaborate, and I talk about it there. And then the last tissue we have is blood. So blood is different from all these other tissues because it's a liquid. That's because the matrix is water, the ground substance that we've talked about. It's water. Now, it's not just water. It's called plasma, but it's mostly water. And water flows, and so blood flows. And what flows with this water, with this plasma, are the cells. And there's three kinds of cells. There's red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. So when you look at it, you can see that. So here's our box. If we look in here, there's the plasma. This is our ground substance. And then all of these, which most of them in this picture, these are red blood cells. And then these, and there's only two in this picture, are white blood cells. And then if you look hard, you can see one little platelet right here. If we look at a different picture, all of these are red blood cells. Here's a white blood cell. Here's a white blood cell. And then there, and also over here, are platelets. So those are the connective tissues. Let's look at muscle. So muscle is a specialized tissue. 
In other words, it really is so specialized, it pretty much only does one thing. And it's specialized to contract. It can shorten, and it can shorten with force. And so it can pull things. There's three kinds of muscle. There's skeletal. Skeletal is called that because it's attached to the skeleton. It's attached to bone. And then we have cardiac muscle. Cardiac muscle is only in the heart. That's the only place you find it. And then we have smooth muscle, which is in the walls of your hollow organs. So things like the stomach and things like that, hollow organs. Well, let's look at skeletal first. So skeletal has these very long cylinder shaped cells. So if I look in here, that's one cell right there. And then there's another cell right there and another cell and another one. They're long. Every single cell is the whole length of the muscle. They're long. They're cylinder shaped. And then they have stripes. You can see these stripes in here. So they're called striated. And they also have a bunch of nuclei. So if you look in here, every cell has got several nuclei, hundreds of them actually. You can see a bunch of these nuclei. So if we were to blow it up, it looks like this. So look, here's this cylinder right here. So this is one cell right there. And here's one cell right here. And then here are the stripes. Here's the nuclei. Here's a better picture of it. And look, I can see right here's the dividing line. So this is one cell over here. Here's another cell and another cell. So I can see three cells here. And here are the stripes. And here are the nuclei. Nothing else looks like skeletal muscle. And then here we have smooth muscle. So smooth muscle is called that because it's not striped. It's not striated. In fact, when you look at the cells, they look like this sort of. They're fat in the middle and they're tapered on the ends. And you can kind of see them in here. You can see these tapered ends in there. When we blow it up a little bit, you'll be able to see them a little bit better. But you can see them in this pit drawing over here. They look a little bit like canoes. But look, there are no stripes in here at all. You don't have those stripes. They're not there. So it's smooth. We blow it up. Here you can see that canoe shape. So it's shaped like a kayak or a canoe. Here's another picture. See the tapered ends right here? There's a tapered end. You can see how it's tapering and then fat in the middle. Same thing here, tapered and then fat. And again, no stripes. And then we have cardiac muscle. So cardiac muscle, remember, is only found in the heart. That's the only place. And if you look at cardiac muscle, it's also striped. It has these striations. You can see them here, these little bitty stripes. But when you look at these cells, they're not long and cylinder shaped. They're short cells, and they tend to be branched. So look, the cell only went from here to here, or from here to here. And here you can see a branch and a branch. They're split. They're branch cells. But the easiest way to recognize cardiac muscle is to look for these things. These are called intercalated discs. And the only tissue with intercalated discs is cardiac muscle. So if you see those, it has to be cardiac muscle. 
Now this picture, you can't see them very well, but they're still there. These are those intercalated discs. Here's a better picture. Look, all of these are intercalated discs right here. And here's more right here. And here's some more. And here. And here. And then, of course, they're striped. And then there's one nucleus per cell. And then the last tissue we have is nervous tissue. So if you look at nervous tissue, it has two different types of cells in it. It has these cells, which are very specialized, and they're the ones that do what the nervous system does. They're specialized for communication. In other words, they can talk to each other, and they can talk to other cells. These are support cells. So they don't do that. These are helper cells. They support, they provide nourishment and things like that to these other cells. So we have neurons. Those are the ones that are specialized. And we have neuroglia. Those are the support cells. So anytime you look at a slide, you're going to see both. So that's a neuron. That's a neuron. And if you look at neurons, they have long little processes that stick off. And as they use these processes, like telephone wires, to talk to other cells. You can see one over here, and here's those long processes. They also have short ones here. Those are the neurons. But also, if you look in this picture, what you're going to see are a ton of little bitty cells. These in here, they're little bitty cells. These are those neuroglia. And there's a lot more neuroglia than there are neurons. Remember, those are support cells. So here's another picture. There's our neuron right there. And you can see these long, skinny processes that stick off. Again, think of them like telephone wires. And then here are our neuroglia. So, neuron. And I only see one. And then neuroglia. And I see a bunch of those. Any questions? So that's kind of a review of histology. So I put these slides at the end of this histology. And what I want to do is we're going to practice. So what I'm going to do is show you a slide. And I want you to try to tell me what tissue it is. So see if you can tell me what tissue this is. Anybody guess? So here's the clues. Look, these are tapered and they're wider in the middle than they are at the end. There are no stripes. This is smooth muscle. That's exactly right. So that's how you're going to figure that out. So look at this one. Look, it looks a lot like Swiss cheese. It's not adipose. These are holes. They're holes. They're holes that these cells sit in. This is hyalin cartilage. What about this one? It's the one we just looked at. Look, there's that giant cell and then these little bitty cells. So that's a neuron and these are neuroglia. So what tissue is this? Nervous, exactly. It's nervous tissue. And then here's another one. And look, I don't know how well you can see it in this picture, but these little things are those dark little connections between these cells. This is cardiac. That's exactly right. And we look at this one. And again, this is not a best picture, but what we have are these cells, and then we have three types of fibers in here. 
three types of fibers. Which is the only one that has all three fibers? It's areolar or areolar. What about this one? Now, it's not all this down here, just this. But look at these little things here. Do anybody remember what those are? They're cilia, so the only tissue with cilia is pseudostratified. So look at there, you have something to look at to figure it out. And then look at this one. These cells here are tall and skinny with a nucleus down at the bottom. Tall and skinny with a nucleus at the bottom. This is simple columnar. You can see it better over here, but anyway, there they are. This one looks like a sponge. Remember these dark fibers are reticular fibers. So what's the tissue? It's reticular connective tissue. Look at this one. We have these again. What is this already? We know. What is it? Pseudostratified. Now what about this one? These fibers are all parallel to each other. Every time this goes up, they all go up. This is dense, regular. And this one looks like bubble wrap. Which one looks like bubble wrap? Adipose, yes. We already saw this one. This is a regular. I don't know why it's in there twice. What about this one? Look at those stripes. Long cylinder shaped cells. It's not bones. This is skeletal muscle, yeah. And if we look at this one, there's adipose again. Just a little bit lower magnification. There we have the cilia again. That's pseudostratified. What about this one? We have these cells, and we have these cells, and we have these cells. This is blood. That's right. And what about this one? This is simple squamous. I don't know if you would have got that one. And then finally, adipose again. That may have not have been the best selection of these, but it's some practice. Another place you can find practice, if you go to the eCampus and you look for the lab PowerPoint for this, you're going to see this one, which is called Histology Review. And then there's two more PowerPoints where you can have review slides. So it's just slide after slide after slide. So you can practice figuring out what these tissues are. Anybody have any questions? So that's the end of this material. That's the end of this whole chapter. So hopefully uh, you have your lab book. And remember, this is exercise six. So you can go through. There's also a review sheet at the end of exercise six. So you can practice some of these. And then also I placed into the assignments folder. So if you go on the eCampus and look in the assignments folder, what you're going to find is a worksheet. And the worksheet is there to help you learn the locations and functions of these tissues. And so if you print that out and practice a few times, you don't have to turn it in. I'm not going to grade it. But the more you practice, the more these locations and functions are going to get stuck in your head. And so it's going to be much easier when you go to take the test or when you take a quiz. Um, 
But anyway, any questions?